Welcome to Metaphysical Soul Speak. I'm your host, Elena Fox Starks. Hey guys, I hope you're doing really well in this very moment in time or outside of time, however you wish to look at that. I hope that whenever and wherever you are, you are really taking note of connection this week. I have noticed that this has been a week of reconnection and new connection and saying goodbye to a couple connections. So this whole past seven days has been all about connectivity. A a dear friend of mine, Amber, God bless her. She is in her last days, I, she's still alive as far as I know, but she's struggling with brain cancer right now and she's just too far gone. And so her um, husband connected with me to let me know. And she and I had been talking a few weeks ago. And the last email she sent to me was, well, wasn't an email, it was a text. And I had sent her a text on a petition I wanted her to sign And she resent it back to me, (laughs) you know, and that was maybe my first clue that, you know, she was slipping a little bit. And that was just a few weeks ago, but, um, that was one connection. And then I had talked to a friend of mine whose house burned down. He had, um, in the fire in paradise, California last year, Uh, he lost his home. A lot of my friends lost their homes. Uh, One of my friends uh, lost his life. You know, it was a pretty devastating fire. If you guys still don't know about it, it was like the biggest fire in the history of the state of California with the most property damage literally burned down my town. I wasn't there at the time. I haven't lived there in many years, not since my husband and I divorced and well, everything happens for a reason. My house where I used to live with him is still there. Thank you, God. But it's not my house anymore. But it's nice to know that the energy of those beautiful memories I had of that life uh, before the complicated times and before I started traveling the world with my children. I'm glad that where the house they grew up in, you know, it's still intact. It's still there. It's good to know. But, um... There's been a lot of connections, but my friend, I hadn't talked to him and, you know, since the fire happened and he reconnected with me today and within 24 hours, a brand new person with the same name, Kyle, two people named Kyle within 24 hours contacted me. That's not a common name. It was very strange that just all of a, all of a sudden out of nowhere, Kyle, right? And so Kyle, um, my new connection, Kyle is going to be getting a reading from me. So I'm really excited. I think, I don't know. It's always in divine timing. I'd like to say, I think it's, I thought it was going to be today. And then the energy shifted and I was just like, nope, not today. Darn it. I think it's going to be tomorrow though. I do everything in divine timing. That's it. You know, uh, I ask before I do anything. (laughs) And I remember years ago, I met this guy years, like 25 years ago. I met this guy who had um, pennies and an I Ching book. And I sometimes I saw him at, at my uh, university and sometimes I didn't. And finally one day I asked him, you know, how come you're here sometimes? How come you're not? You know, you're here and you do I Ching readings for free or for a dollar for people for like donations. So how come you're here some days and other times not? And he said, I don't make a move without the I Ching because God speaks to me through the I Ching and I might, I might have to do an episode on the I Ching and, and explain it to you uh, more because a lot of people who have been contacting me, my new friend, Joy and, uh, Riley, everyone is opening up. You guys, everyone is opening up to the new consciousness. There's a new wave of spiritual awakening coming through. I have a lot of millennials and I'm so happy to have you guys on board. And I'm so happy that you guys are so open-minded. I have never in my life, um, thought that 
I would be like this age and saying, wow, you know, the 20 year old somethings are really uh, awake and aware because when I was that age, I mean, I was a little, I was spiritually aware. I've always been spiritually aware, but as far as social stuff, I wasn't very aware. Um, I just, it's like I had a, I was running my life on subconscious programming you know, just knee jerk reactions, being angry at the drop of a hat, uh, feeling slighted, acting pouty like a child. Like I haven't, I, I never, I just kind of thought it was like maybe a stage people went through and, and maybe the people I knew were all, we we're all kind of the same back then. But the millennials, you guys coming up right now that you're in your twenties, you pretty much know who you are, what you want, what's right, what's wrong. And it's not your parents that taught you in many of these cases, you know, like I grew up watching old movies and old shows and my kids are like, mom, you can't, that's not okay to say those words. I'm like, yeah, but it's a line from my favorite movie. Well, mom, that's sexist now, you know? So I hear these kind of things all the time. And so I'm glad that I'm now getting the millennials in and I'm learning so much. I'm growing as a person always constantly, no matter what, but the millennials are here to help the rest of us older people to kind of reach a new plateau with emotional intelligence, social intelligence, and they're helping us to, well, hashtag get woke, right? So I'm glad about that. And I wanted to say thank you to you guys. I've gotten in the past, uh, well, 75 hours, 72 hours, I guess not 75. Well, I guess within the 72 hours is the same thing in the past three days. I've, I've gotten three readings and my, my schedule starting to fill up. So if you guys are interested in getting a reading, there's going to be a little commercial after this break and you're going to hear um, how to get in touch with me to get a reading or it's in the show's description also because my, schedule is really starting to fill up and I'm really glad about it because it's, I mean, the more I help you guys with the readings, the more my connection and here again is this word connection. My connection to divine is getting, uh, my, my channels getting bigger as far as, you know, my, I don't know how, how do I say channel? Like when I say I'm a Reiki channel, I, I imagine it's like a straw and the more you use it, the straw gets bigger no, the more I suck. No, that doesn't make sense. No. <laughs> the less I suck. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is though. It's like a straw, right? And it's, or a tube or cylindrical, cylindrical tube. And it kind of gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And I get more and more and more energy from it. Right. And the more energy I get, the more I put into the healing grid, the more you guys get, the more I become psychic, the more I open up that channel, the bigger it gets. And I've noticed that this past week, even it's gotten super wide. Like I'm just seeing things, just seeing flashes of inspiration, flashes of just random things. And it's just like, I know things, you know, like my, my son can like go out, be going around town doing something and he'll come home and he'll go, mom, you'll never guess what happened. And I'll know, you know, or vice versa for him too, the same thing. So connection with our source with our abilities that are coming online right now, I want you guys to pay pay attention to the connections, to the connections of the people that are coming into your life new. Pay attention to the people who are leaving out of your life like tan rápido, very fast. I I have had a couple people leave the frick out of my life recently. One of them I was really happy to see go quite frankly, um, threw me off my game. He contacted me today and then he, he like wrote four messages to me, called me without asking if it was okay, which is never okay because I may be recording, right? Just, you know, shoot me an email. Don't just try to call me. Right. But he knew my number cause he's someone I was on a project with anyway. You know, he just called without asking and then he wrote me four messages and then deleted the four messages. And I'm like, why are you even contacting me when I told you this is harassment, right? But I was happy to see him go and he kind of came to mess with my energy a little bit. And it did for like 15 minutes. I was just like, dude, like what the hell? I do not want a connection with this energy. I called in my angels, my guides. 
I started doing the Ho'oponopono process, which is, if you don't know, go back and listen to my Ho'oponopono episode, but it's about uh, just saying, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, and you're saying these things to God, you know, and you know, go back and hear the explanation, but you just keep saying it over and over again until you feel better, because it cleans the energy, and it cleans that channel out. And so I've had connections leave. I'm having brand new connections come in, which I'm super happy about. I really welcome that connection. My connection with God is getting better. My connection to my body is getting better. I am, uh, me- <laughs> see, I was going to say mentally clear and then blah, there, that happens. That's hilarious. <laughs> we, none of us are infallible. <laughs> um, no one's perfect. So I guess that's what that Hayoka crazy wisdom is all about. But no, my, my connection to my mind, like I'm getting mentally clear. I'm getting more focused on my goals. My son and I suddenly, our relationship is gelling and we're having a better connection um, with each other. He's having better connection with other people. He's been looking for a job for a year and he finally got a job this week. My money is starting to flow better. I've noticed that there's a bigger, better connection to my flow of my own personal abundance and my source. And I have a feeling this is going to happen for you guys too, if it has not started already. And then there's a connection to people that you've always loved and they've been there, but they haven't been there for a while. Today I contacted my aunt Evelyn because in Tejana, there's a, um, in California, brand new wildfire rushing through towards Murrieta where my aunt used to live for years. And I wrote her today. I'm like, please tell me you're okay. I'm going to be worried. And she's like, Oh, I moved to Las Vegas. So don't worry about it. I'm like, Oh, thank God. You know, last time I lived in California, six years ago, she was still in Murrieta. And she's like, oh, God, six years ago, I moved to Vegas. I'm like, oh, I thought you guys were, I thought you're commuting back and forth. But, you know, thank God my aunt's okay. So reconnected with my aunt. I'm reconnecting with family and friends I haven't heard from for a very long time. Connecting with new people. sort Like all these connections are flowing and flowing and flowing. And a problem that I had last week that I was super worried about, I decided I'm not going to worry about it. My higher guidance says, don't worry about it. Just let it go because we're going to take care of it for you. Don't panic. And it was hard for a few days. I was panicking. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna let it go. There's nothing I can do to control the situation. I can only do what I can do and I can't do anymore. And I'm going to accept the things that, you know, like the serenity prayer, dear God, you know, help me to accept the things that I can change you know, help me be strong enough to change these things. I I don't remember the whole, the way this goes. I'm not an alcoholic. I'm, I'm too, (laughs) I've been too broke and lazy to become alcoholic, but, (laughs) um, you know, but it helped me to see the things and accept the things I cannot change. Help me change the things I can and give me the wisdom to know the difference. You know, that's like the best prayer ever. And so I've been kind of, getting into the flow of that. I even watched Sandra Bullock's movie, uh, 28 days, which is a pretty, Ooh, pretty interesting, but heavy movie, heavy, heavy movie. It, it was, uh, there's a couple parts in that movie that just, it, it, it shook me to my core. It was a really good movie. I love Sandra Bullock. Anyway, Sandra, Sandra, I don't know how you say her name anymore, but yeah. So I, so I've been connecting with, the part of myself that trusts. And I don't know if you remember a few days ago, I read from um, the book, the karma connection that we're not supposed to worry about any of the questions except what we want. So that's what I started doing every chance. I get a, a, a moment to my, with my mind to myself, I'm connecting to my mind. I'm connecting to my dream of what I want. I'm imagining my house. And, the, and, and there's this house that's been on the market here for about six years. And I thought when I first saw it, oh, there's no way in hell it's going to be there when I finally maybe might be able to pay the money. And you know what? It's still available. And my higher guidance said, that's your house. I'm like, okay. But then I've been worried about the hows and the whys and the whos and the when, 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 when. 
And I started connecting. I read that in the Karma Connection the other day, and I was like, I have to read it for you guys. So I did. I read it for you guys. And since that day, I've been going, you know what? I just am going to think about the what. I'm imagining my my arms around the outside of the house and kissing the house, saying, I love you, house. You're my new house. You're my like my new best friend. I know it sounds really silly, but that's like something I would do. <laughs> crazy, you know, crazy Hayoka hey wisdom, right? It's just, or Hayoka hey crazy wisdom. I, it, I've always been that way, you know, just I connect with things. You know, most of you long-term listeners, you know that I've been calling my, my coffee pot. Her name is Jasmine. That's what she told me. So I, every day I'm like, thank you, Jasmine, for your service, you know? If you're nice to your things and you give your love and your energy and attention to the things like that, like your washing machine and your dryer, I told my dryer that I loved it and it, it used to only be air, like no heat at all. And I, and I said, I wanted to thank you, you know, for um, drying my clothes for me. Thank you. Because it wasn't doing a very good job, right? And then I said, hey, but you know what? I thank you and I appreciate you. And I washed like the outside. I, I cleansed it really well and the whole time just giving love and energy into it and suddenly the dryer started working my son came home and he's like oh my god the dryer's hot I'm like yeah it likes me it's working for me and he's like how did you get it to do that I'm like I'm not going to tell you I'll tell him if he asks again but he was shocked how like I connected with it I connected with it every molecule around you is God whether the molecule is a part of a piece of hair on a dog's back or your front door or your television or the air you're breathing or another human being in the room. Everything is God and everything responds to high vibrational energy. One way or another, everything responds to high vibrational energy. So if something is of low vibration and you're high vibration, boom, it's going to skedaddle. It's, it's like the negative polarity of a magnet. It's going to be shooting across the room so fast it can't be near you because you're too freaking high vibration. But if something else is high vibration, like attracts like. That's one of the laws of the universe. So I wanted to just bring it up to you, to guys, to you guys today. Like, you know, for real, we're going to have, I, I think it's going to continue. And I also feel like we're increasing for real, like, And I'm not just saying that because I did finish during the month of August. I read the whole book for you guys every Saturday for four weeks. I read and finished the book, The Science of Getting Rich on Saturdays. And that book, I mean, if you didn't listen to it, if you thought, well, whatever, maybe you already are rich or maybe you didn't think you needed it right now or you put it off, go back and listen. You got all four episodes. You can listen to it in in a weekend or in a day, you know, get some, bust out your, your paints or, or maybe some clay, go do some art, art projects or whatever it is. Maybe just lay in bed with your sweetheart at night for a few nights in a row and just listen to the signs of getting rich episodes because it's going to increase you and help you in every possible way. And So I'm not just saying that I feel this energy of increase because I read that book, although it did remind me of the finer points that I had forgotten and I had in the past used it to get exactly where I wanted to be. I wanted to be able to travel with my kids, not worry about money while they were young and just go, 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 go as a single widowed mom. And after I studied and studied and studied and studied this book, all of a sudden, my world opened up and it happened. And I was just like, I have enough money to travel, but I didn't have enough money to live in the United States. How crazy is that for us to take taxis, eat in restaurants, hire maids, hire Spanish tutors, um, take buses and airplanes was cheaper than us just staying put and living in a room sharing a house of 10 people in Richmond, California, in a bad area, really bad area of Richmond, California. I mean, like, how crazy is that? But that's what I did. I'm like, you know what, guys, that we could do better than this life. This life is not going, this is not going good for us. And the longer we stay here, the longer we're going to run a risk of getting shot, if not killed. We need to get the hell out of here. So we did. 
and we went to Guatemala and Mexico and then eventually moved to Detroit. We, we want to see what that scene was about. And uh, Detroit is an amazing city, amazing city, a lot of art and music and open-minded people. And it was phenomenal. And a lot of, there's a lot of weird closed minded pockets of closed minded people. But in my neighborhood, we had really cool people and, uh, we had, I mean, the symphony, the gay pride, the jazz festival, everything there was just super fun. I went into a restaurant there that had been over a hundred years, a Chinese restaurant. I think it was like two or three stories. The whole restaurant was two or three stories up. And I met a guy from mainland China. He grew up there and, um, he said his family owned it. You know, they just, they've had it for generations. I'm like, how cool is that? It's a really neat city. But, um, but anyway, I, you know, we were there for a while and we went to Columbia. I mean, over the last few months, I've like told the whole story, but went to, we went over to Peru for 18 months and now we've settled for 22 months. We've been here. My oldest went back to California when he turned 18, wanted to have a life on his own. I told him I will always have money in the bank to bring you home, honey. If you need to come back, not a problem with me. And he never has. Now he's got a job and he's happy. And, um, he's in the middle of his transgender change and he's becoming the person he was meant to be. He made all the right connections. And again, there's about the connections. He just found a connection last week where he will get his top surgery for absolutely free as a part of like a grant program for young people who know who they are, but they can't be who they are without the surgery. I'm like, Oh my God. And all these advocates he's working with, he'll get his, um, his ID with the correct gender marked on it. He's going to legally change his name to a male name because I named him Alexandria. That's not, he could go with Alex or Alexander, but that's not him. And he's Liam. And so now Liam is going to be, he's going to be his own man. And I'm proud of him. I mean, that's damn brave. You know, that's Dan. There's a lot of people for generations that felt they wanted to flip genders and there was no way they could do it. And they were terrified to even think the thought, but millennials come in and go, you know what? That's, that's not who I am. I'm going to, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to flip it. And I think that the people that coming are coming in as transgenders now, they are helping us to see a whole nother side, a whole nother side of life and a whole nother perspective And that's another connection to source because, you know, it's one more thing that people are being judgmental about in the minute they realize, Oh God is another test. (laughs) And now it's all right. People have the right to be who they are, right? They need to have the connection to what their soul wants them to be, who they are in their soul. And people aren't taking no for an answer anymore. And I love that. So we are filled with all these beautiful and wonderful connections in just new and profound ways. And it's going to continue to happen. And I have been feeling this increase in, um, I feel that not only is my hair changing back to its original color because of the diet I'm on and well, what I've been doing for the past few months, drinking, um, gelatin like tea. I'm, and I, I don't, I'm, I, I'm not even caring. I'm doing just strawberry jello. I'm not even worried that it's not sugar free. I'm just going for it. And my hair is coming back the same color. It used to be years ago instead of white. And, um, I'm losing weight. My mind is clearer. I'm less foggy mentally. My income is increasing. All the right people are coming into my life. All the wrong people are quickly escaping my life. And it's just everything in the world is getting that much better. Even though you could literally say the world is on fire right now. And it's, it's weird that it's happening, but it's all a part of God's plan, right? It's all a part of the way and the nature of the universe. If humans didn't even live on this planet, the fires would have happened anyway. I've seen um, fires that came down from lightning striking the trees. So not all the fires are arson or man's fault, although in the Amazon they are. 
and they're still raging on. So still, please guys, send more rain, energy. Oh, and this is my last plea for prayers. And then I'm going to get right into the daily um, Schumann Resonance stuff. Uh, the man who started the rebirthing, I don't know if you guys have ever heard about that. And again, I might have to do a show on this. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, his name is Leonard Orr, O-R-R, Leonard Orr. He is having some health issues. And so I'm going to just put out a public announcement, please send love and light and prayers to him. I've already started to send him Reiki. I've already put him in connection to the healing grid. If you guys want to be hooked up to it, you just ask, um, you know, just say, Hey, uh, God, please hook me up to the healing grid or universe or ask your higher self or ask my higher self. Anytime you ever need anything, ask my holy guardian angels to come and get you, you know, or if you know, or your own, you know, you just say, Hey, Elena's higher self, help me. You know, a good friend of mine told me the other day on my birthday, actually, uh, about a week and a half ago, he said, you know, I was having a really rough day a few months back and I asked your, your guardian angels to come and be with me and they surrounded me and my vi- my body started to vibrate and I felt hot and I felt this huge rush of energy and I felt surrounded and I felt protected and it helped me mentally and I got better. So I wanted to let you guys know you could do that also. But please send love and light and prayers to Leonard Orr. He is an amazing person. He is the one who started the therapy called rebirthing. And rebirthing is a way that you can go back and release all of the traumas of your own birth and of your past lives and all kinds of stuff. It's a way to like literally not in a religious way, but be born again spiritually in a way that you can release a whole boatload of crap basically. And he, um, he's just having some issues. He's getting up there in age a little bit. And my friend Kyle told me, Hey, I need you to pray for Leonard. I'm all, Oh, I'm hooking him up to the grid. I've been sending him Reiki all day. And I'm just asking you guys say a little prayer for Leonard. And also for my friend Kyle, he's, is he, they finally came and took the debris away from his property from when his house that he built with his own hands all by himself. He built this gorgeous house and he had just had this beautiful life he had for himself and it all just burned down to the ground last year. And he said, it's been just mentally out of control. Like it was just been so sad and He's finally starting to mend himself mentally and physically. Then he got into a car accident where his his truck was totaled. And he's just, a lot of us are going through this kind of crap. And I didn't go through it in this past year, but a few years back where I lost everything I owned. And I, I lost a whole bunch of people. I lost my stepmother, my birth mother, and my adopted mother within a year of each other. Um... I just lost a lot of people, a lot of my friends that were younger than me that were um, in pretty good health. I had one of my friends, he contacted me on LinkedIn and 24 hours later he dropped dead randomly. No one knew he wasn't sick. There was nothing. It was just like, holy crap, where did he go? You know, and I'm like, oh my God, I didn't see his message right away and so like I saw it like a week later and I went to his Facebook page like, hey, why didn't we think about this before? It's so dumb. Why didn't we connect? And I just put it on his Facebook page and his friends wrote me and said he just freaking died, you know, and a couple of my friends died just like super recently, like in the past six months. And it's just been um, heart wrenching, you know, in, in a lot of ways, just, and now my, one of my very best longtime friends 25 years we've been friends or maybe 30 years since I was eight. Yeah. 30 years. Crap. 32 years we've been friends and she's dying this week. So there's a lot of connections leaving a lot of connections that need to leave and a lot of connections coming in. And on top of all that, there's a lot of people that are um, connecting to their spiritual side and awakening. And Victor Odo on his recent uh, episode of his YouTube channel I highly recommend him. He's one of the real guys that 
hasn't fallen into the false ascension matrix. He's got his mind and his wits about him, and he's a pretty he's a pretty straight ahead dude. I love him dearly. He's from Michigan. He actually was living in, I think he said Livonia, which was like 20 minutes from Detroit where I used to live. And then he moved to California. So he's got like a lot of a similar energy and vibe that I do. And he's pretty excellent person. He used to sell marijuana. I used to sell marijuana. I mean, it's just like, we've got a lot of weird, crazy stuff in, in common, but, but he's, um, he was saying this week that he was pointing out the Virgo energy, which I pointed out last week, but it's still going on guys. I mean, are you clearing the clutter of your mind and your heart and your living space? My son got the bug like a few days ago and he started clearing out all of the stuff he hasn't even looked at in months, started taking pictures and started loading it up on the internet. And he's like, mom, I'm going to make a lot of money this week and I'm going to give you back all the money you spent like on my computer I don't use. And, you know, maybe if you want one of my watches or I could sell it. And I'm like, what the heck? It's so weird, you know, that he's just like, but I'm like, okay, you know what? I want you to clear your clutter. If you want to clear your clutter, that's on you. And then he says, mom, I feel bad. I think I want to pay rent. I'm going to, I'm going to sell my motorcycle. I'm like, are you going to miss it if you sell it? And he got really kind of quiet and he goes, yeah. I'm like, no, you keep your motorcycle, right? It's this project. It's been a nickel dime project, but you know, nickeling and diming us to death is what I said, because it's like every week it's like $9 for this, $2 for that. <clears throat> but it's something that's helped him understand the mechanics of how um, an engine works. So I'm glad that we, we got it. We, we did it, you know, it's been an amazing project. So he's, he decided he's going to keep it. So I'm like, good, you can't sell that. It's only been 11 months since he bought it. He, well, he was a bicycle and he put a combustible engine, a two stroke motor and then he added the um, the huge exhaust, and that thing just hauls ass down the road. It can go up to 50 miles an hour. I had to buy him a motorcycle helmet <laughs> so he would be safe with it. But um, but that's just that's just part of it, like the clearing of the clutter. I've been getting very organized, very into my Virgo mind. I've been really excited about it, and. It's just I'm reconnecting to parts of myself that I haven't been connected to for a very long time. So anyway, I hope you guys are noticing this in your own life as well. Um, when I'm done reading these things, we're going to take a break. And I'm going to be channeling the Andromedans uh, in a September message. I think they said they were going to do something about healing energy. So we're going to see where they're at when we come back, I honestly, I don't have any questions for them. They just said they had a message for you guys. Well, speak of the handsome devil. I had to pause really quick. My, my, uh, my youngest walked in. It was his six month anniversary with his girlfriend and they went out and, um, he just walked in the door and, um, anyway, um, I wanted to get to it get to uh, what's going on with the Schumann Resonance today on DisclosureNews.it that they say at the 10 o'clock in the morning report UTC time, it says the TSU site had some glitches until now. Remember that energy. I told you guys the magnetosphere has been, <coughs> excuse me, really messing up. The magnetosphere has been just knocking us around and knocking around our technology. It's been kind of crazy. Um, but it's just little glitches. It's not big. You know, yesterday it took an hour for my uh, computer to be um, just turned on. I couldn't even turn it on. It was just like it, it went on, but then it was like taking a, an, a year just to open up one page. So I had to turn it off and turn it back on a couple times. It was like it was just glitches. And then all of a sudden it was fine. It's like fine right now. Open it up today, but a boom, but a bing. Everything was fine. So it's funny that it's saying this. So it says, the, the site had some glitches until now. The surprise update shows us a strong activity. The opening was given by an isolated peak at 55 hertz, followed by a period of about two hours of strong movements, culminating with a 67 hertz spike at 8.30 UTC time. And then the 1700 UTC evening report says, 
The activity after the strong movement described earlier remained calm. The black band is due to lack of data for that time period. Wow. Yeah, and remember, even in the other one, the Heart Math Institute, they they've been having some blackout issues too. Twice in the past month, there was just nothing. I think in the past two weeks, there's been twice where it just says, "Sorry, there's no data available at all." In Hulu, South Africa, I'm looking at the chart. It's still at absolute flat line zero. You know, I have no idea what's going on in Hulu. I should find. I have, a, I have a friend who just moved from a different country on the continent of Africa, and he just moved to South Africa. And he told me, "Please, you guys, pray for people in South Africa, especially Africans who are from other countries who moved to South Africa. They are now being targeted by the South African people, and they're being beaten up. They're being killed." They're being threatened. It's really scary. My friend was beaten up a couple weeks ago, and he told me that his life has been threatened. He's like, "All my, what's my only crime? I came here and I did a job that nobody else wanted to do." He is working on an eco farm. That's also a tourism project, and it's helping people in Africa to understand what is the importance of living in a green way. I'm like, what an incredible job! This is my friend for years. He was starving. He was in his country. His father was a rich millionaire from Detroit, and he went over. I think he's from Kenya. I think that's where he's from. Darn it! I'm not thinking of it right now. But he said, yeah, it's like his dad showed up, had this lovely love affair with his mom for six months, and then went back to Detroit, and they lost touch with each other. And then she found out she's pregnant. And I'm like, well, that means you're an American. You need to go to your other country, you know, maybe and go to Detroit and connect with your cousins. And he, he's like, my mom never got my dad's last name. Oh my god, oh my god. So anyway, his name is Tony. If you want to pray for him, you know, someday finding his father. He's given up hope, but he's just like, I don't know, what I'm going to do. I'm like, well, if I was in your shoes, buddy, if I, I would be walking to the nearest country in which I would be able to survive. I would walk out of the country or I would die trying. That would be just me though. That's that's who I am, you know what I mean? <laughs> If I'm going to die in the damn desert like a dog, it's going to be because I'm trying to better myself. And so he finally got him he he like would take a couple trips and make extra money and he, he got all this money and he went to South Africa and now he's in this situation where he loves his job he's super happy but he can't leave the farm he lives on for threat of uh, death so I don't know South Africa is kind of heating up in the political way so please send your love and light to all foreigners no matter what the skin color they've got the, even um, the Africans that go to South Africa are in trouble with The locals are just, you know. Anyway, that's that. Let's get into it, guys. Heartmath.org. Um, let's see here. All right, in um, California, they started off at 29 hertz frequency on the Schumann resonance scale at midnight, and they were down to zero by 4 a.m. Zero. So that's kind of crazy. For California, go down to zero. I, I don't think they. I'm looking at the chart. They did get a little lower on the scale before, but I'm looking at it going. I don't see where they zeroed out before. Um, now the number 88 has come up a couple different times for me today. And oh, I, I said that it's 11:22, 11 and 22 right this very minute. So lots of number things. 77444. Those have been coming up for a lot of people that have been contacting me. I did a reading for someone yesterday, and it came up in a reading, 77 and 444. Um, I literally did the reading at 444, and then last night at 444 a.m. was when I was finally able to publish this uh, episode, or yesterday's episode. At 444 a.m. is when I pushed the button to publish in 1123. So, okay, now I'm thinking my, my ex-boyfriend, that was his birthday, 1123. And thank you, God, he's still alive as far as I know. He might be thinking about me. When I start seeing his birthday in the time, I, I, I know I need to start praying for him. So mental note to self. All right, it's 88 in 
Hofu of Saudi Arabia at midnight. They were at 88 and they went up to 89 only by 4 a.m. So there's that 88. Now in uh, Lithuania, they started out in, by the way, my friend is from Lithuania with 1123 birthday. So, all right, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I know I'm getting confirmations and now my body is suddenly burning hot. Does that guy, does that happen for you guys? Have that connection with yourself. Know that when you get a sudden hot flash, <laughs> even if you're young, you might get these hot flash or these rush of energy. It means that spirit is telling you, yes, pay attention in this moment. It's a confirmation of something you thought. You know, it's like the, it's where the universe is going. Yes, it's giving you that yes energy. Okay, so anyway, uh, Lithuania started off at midnight at 184 hertz frequency. By 4 a.m., they were at 179 hertz frequency. And again, um, Alberta, Canada, 260 hertz frequency. They're always the front runner in this. 260 in Canada at midnight, and by 4 a.m., they were up to 270. Damn, that's that's a lot. Okay, so. Um, Again, at uh, midnight in Northland, New Zealand, they started off at 89 and they went down to 83 by 4 a.m. And again, Hulului is just, uh, it's appearing to be offline in South Africa. They're just, it's just all completely, that's it. That's all she wrote, baby. It's just been zero since August 22nd. All right, here it is again, the number 88. We are on Lesson 88 in A Course in Miracles today. We are just, we're not going to read the whole thing. So again, it's your responsibility if you want to take these lessons. According to Brother Yeheshua, everybody in the world needs to take these lessons. You're going to have to learn it sooner or later, so I figured I'd push you guys right along. And if nothing else, we're just going to raise our vibration up, up, up because that's going to help us on every possible level. Lesson 88, again, is a review. We're still in the review phase for another couple days. The first idea is this, from lesson taken from Lesson 75, the light has come. The light has come. So uh, specific applications for this is... You, you look at something that maybe you don't think has light in it. Just say, this cannot show me the darkness, for the light has come. The light in you is all that I would see. And then you say the person's name. I would see in this only what is there. The light has come. And the next one, I love this one. This one has stuck with me since the first time I ever read it. And it became such a deep part of my subconsciousness and my psyche that, and psyche is a Greek word for soul. This has really um, kind of taken a hold of me in a deep, deep way. And I didn't consciously think of it or remember it, but I mean, this has followed me through the last six years of my life because I took this lesson originally like six or seven years ago. And this is from lesson 76. I am under no laws but God's. I am under no laws but God's. So specific forms in applying this idea that are useful are this. My perception of this shows me I believe in laws that do not exist. I see only the laws of God at work in this. Let me allow God's laws to work in this and not my own. So uh, here it says in the lesson part, it says, uh, here is a perfect statement of my freedom. I am under no laws but God's. I am constantly tempted to make up other laws and give them power over me. I suffer only because of my belief in them. They have no real effect on me at all. I am perfectly free of the effects of all laws save God's and his are the laws of freedom again the idea for this lesson is I am under no laws but God's 
I mean, that, that, that idea right there, guys, that's served me so well over the years. I mean, when I see something that where then injustice is going to about to befall me or my kids and I just look at them and go, well, you know what? We're above this. And I don't mean I'm above like the law or whatever. I mean that I'm only following God's laws. God told me where to go when I went there for seven years. I have been, well, actually it's been like eight years, I think maybe even no. It was 2007. Oh my God. It's been 12 years. I can't believe time flies. Time flies when you work for God for 12 years, for a dozen years, I gave my life over to the one will 12 years ago. And I have been a hundred percent following what God told me. So I'm not saying I'm above the law. You know, I'm like not an outlaw. I'm definitely not an (laughs) in-law. I I was an outlaw for a few minutes, but but when I see the the writing on the wall and God says, get the hell out of this place, this is, it's time I go because I'm under no laws, but God's, I do what God tells me. And that's why I don't even know what I'm going to do the show on until God tells me. And you know what? I love it that way, honestly. And just like tonight, tonight is no different. After this message, I'm going to come back and I'm going to channel the Andromedans. I think they have something to say about energetic healing, but I'm honestly not sure. I'm going to go with the flow and I'm going to be your telepathic guide for the evening as I indirectly channel the Andromedans after this. If you're listening to this, you obviously like podcasts and you probably like music too. Long walks on the beach, romantic dancing under the stars. And oh, wait, we're not doing that right now (laughs) on Spotify. You can listen to all of that in one place for free. And you don't even need a premium account, which is cool. Free is always good. Spotify has a huge catalog of podcasts on every topic, including the one you're listening to right now. On Spotify, you can follow your favorite podcasts so you never miss an episode. Download episodes to listen to offline wherever you are, including your long romantic walks on the beach. Also, one one thing I love about Spotify is that you can easily share what you're listening to with your friends via Spotify's integrations with the social platforms like Instagram. So that makes it really, really versatile. Just search for Metaphysical Soul Speak on the Spotify app or browse podcasts in the Your Library tab. And follow me, of course, don't forget, so that you'll never again miss an episode of Metaphysical Soul Speak. Spotify is the world's leading music streaming service, and now it can be your go-to for podcasts, too. Thank you guys so much for supporting Metaphysical Soul Speak on Spotify. Do you ever wish you could look into the next chapter in your book of life and see what's coming next? What does the universe have in store for you? I can help you with that. I will give you a Celtic cross reading, which is 10 cards, or you can ask me three questions and I use three cards per question. So that's nine cards, or I can channel your higher guidance, or maybe God directly for you. Maybe you want to talk to your dear departed Aunt Edna, because maybe you have a few questions and she was the smartest person you knew. If your deceased relatives are available or your ascended masters, I can channel them for you personally. Let me have one hour to show you 
the future in your next chapter of your book of life. Readings are $75 and it takes me an hour to an hour and a half to complete. And for this price, you will also be hooked up to the healing grid around the planet for free, which means yours truly, me, I will be giving you Reiki 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the rest of your life. All you have to do is let me know. Metaphysicalsoulspeak at gmail.com and we will explore your future together. All right, guys, in the first half, I think I got the name of that book wrong. It's called Karma Transformed by Dr. Kelly Bennett and Cheryl or Charlie Romney Brown. And also, I forgot to tell you, we are at 97 on the Ascension Symptoms scale. So I didn't want to get too deep into this without telling you guys and between my recording the first half and now this half I have been overcome by this massive wave of energy so I don't know um, I haven't like assessed it to see what it is but I'm feeling really tired and overwhelmed out of nowhere so the ascension symptoms in the past few minutes have been all of a sudden expanded. I've had like tinnitus for days, but for weeks, months, years, <laughs> but like a very high pitched, um, almost like a background noise style tinnitus. But I just about 10 or 20 minutes ago got really overwhelmed by intense, intense energy. So if you guys are feeling that and you're getting really tired, uh, don't be alarmed. It's just another plasma wave it's probably solar winds it's been the solar winds have been hitting us at the speed of close to like 780 to 790 miles per hour literally wind from the sun is reaching us at that rate so and it's you know because the crack of the magnetosphere is just affecting us it's affecting all of us and I just feel something just hit us <laughs> We will try to assess it by tomorrow and see what I can come up with. But all right, I'm already connected to the Andromedans, and I'm going to see if I can put the phone down to um, hopefully. Ah, <laughs> I just dropped the phone. That's not what I meant to do. Oh yeah, okay. Here we go. I'm putting it, I found a strap on my pillow. I have a neck pillow. I'm going to put it on. So, all right, hopefully you guys can hear this. I, I went, I was recording from my living room and now I'm in my bedroom. So it'd be a little bit quieter. It's late. I had to wait. It's like one in the morning. So we don't have much traffic at this hour. Okay. I'm already connected to the Andromedans. I'm going to do Ki Asha. If you want to do this with me, you will also be able to increase your telepathic connection with anyone that you're trying to connect with, as well as you are um, able to see flashes or visions of things in a psychic way. This just activates your third eye. You, you touch the middle of your forehead, slightly in between your eyebrows and slightly above your eyebrows. If you feel there's like a little tiny notch in your bone there, you touch this with any finger and you say, ki ah sha ki ah sha Ki ah sha. When you do that, ooh, your third eye starts to pulsate like mine is right now. It's pretty exciting, actually. I love it. Um, this it's a Pleiadian trick, but we are connected to the Andromedans. I am an indirect channel. I use telepathy to talk to beings from other realms, other dimensions, other planets. And these uh, people are my friends. Go back and listen. I did talk about my experiences with the Andromedans. You could, I think you might be able to do a search for my, for Metaphysical Soul Speak, the podcast, and look up Andromedans. We've had a couple channeling sessions, and then I had 
and experience. Um, one of my um, episodes is about my experience when they they came and got me in the middle of the night and they took me to their world and I lived with them for like 20 years. And then they brought me back five hours from when they took me originally. But it was like an out-of-body experience. It was like to a different dimension. It was a wild, trippy, trippy thing. But I consider these beings my friends. I lived with these people for 20 years in their home world. And they taught me a lot about their life and society. But we're always still learning. You, you know, you can't just go live on someone's planet for 20 years and know everything. I mean, I'm 50 years old and I don't know everything about my own country, let alone my own state of California. You know, so we're always learning and growing. Anyway, I don't allow beings to inhabit my body. Only my own soul inhabits my body. That's why I use an indirect communication method, telepathy. So sometimes I'll have to use muscle testing to um, make sure I am hearing what I think I'm hearing because with all stuff, at least psychic and otherwise, or telep- you know, telepathy, you, you, you only know what you know. You only have the information that you have and your brain has... Well, files in it. Sometimes they they pluck words out of your filing system in your brain. And so I use muscle testing to make sure that I am completely clear and have good clarification. And if I don't, I will stop and ask. But they're going to give me a direct message that I'm going to channel for you guys to the best of my ability. And I'm not. it's not going to be a question and answer session today. So... All right, are you guys ready? I'm getting muscle testing says yes. I use kinesiology for yes, no answers. Um, Are you guys here? And here we go. Welcome to my podcast, Andromedans, my friends. Thank you for coming today. You may start your message now. Greetings, citizens of Earth. It is us. We are the Andromedans. We are very happy to come and speak with you today. We have information for you that you have not normally been accustomed to hearing Usually you are hearing energy or ascension reports or the beings in your telepathic channels have been speaking about spacecraft in your midst or energy fluctuations in your physical body systems. And sometimes we are in the mix as far as this is concerned but today we have a different sort of message for you we are from the andromedan galaxy we are beings from a higher dimension than you normally we are in our dimension but we are reaching down to speak with you um okay guys this is me elena now are you guys in the seventh dimension Yes, we reside mostly in the seventh dimension. Sometimes we can drop our energy down to the fifth dimension, but when we meditate, we raise ourselves up to the ninth or eleventh dimension. Sometimes when our meditations go very deep, we have access to other dimensions. We are a peaceful race of beings. We are all about the love and the light. And we have a great deal of love for all of humanity. All of what you are going through has been... Are you saying like a starburst? Okay, yeah, they're saying... Okay, so all the things you have been going through are like a starburst in the sky. And it radiates outward and farther and farther into the nether regions of space. And when this happens, when in, in the case of an actual star... When a neutron star explodes, eventually everybody in the cosmos and galaxy feels it. 
That is because we all are one. Everything is one, including the stars and the planets are all one with us and our bodies. So when your message of your ascension had reached us, it was the very beginning stages, of course. We became very interested and knew right away we had to come and be here to support our brothers and sisters in the light, in the way of the highest light. In in our way of saying that, what we mean is it is our communion in our souls, at our soul level, with your souls, and with the one true provider and creator of the uh, galaxies and the universe. We are very interested in communing with all things, all beings. We live at a level of higher consciousness. We live at a level of love and pure joy and bliss. We have harmony in our society and we wish to share this energy with you today. We are ever seeking and expanding our exchange program. If you are interested, you just have to say Andromedans come and get me and we will come. If we feel that you are a good candidate to learn from our world, we will take your soul on an astral journey and you can live with us as long as you like we will bring you back the very same day it is never a problem for us to do this because it is something we have done quite often as a form of maybe you could call it a student exchange in your world and it's just for the purpose of learning about us and our culture so that you understand there's always other ways to go about your day-to-day lives and maybe if you have a fresh and new perspective you can learn to achieve fresh and new things in your life that is the end of our service announcement ha 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 (laughs) okay all right what else do you guys have today we wish to discuss the expansion of your spirit, your mind, and therefore your bodies, because you are reaching physically up into a higher dimension and realm and trying to expand your physical bodies. And we have understood that maybe you don't understand how the matrix works in your world, for it is the same in our world. There is a series of matrices And you may view this as if they are pieces of fabric or cloth laying on top of each other, separated by the space of what you would call energy or vibration. These aren't actual physical cloths, mind you. They are just energetic woven patterns of what we call the fabric of time and space. Now, these are very intricate and they're very delicate and yet you aren't aware of them and you can move between them and we uh, I'm missing the transmission there for a minute guys um, we are interested in explaining the way this fabric works for you when you have a piece of fabric it's only one piece of fabric but when we see the fabric of space and time it is parallel side by side all in a row many 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 to infinity and then there is another fabric going the opposite direction and you may look upon this in your algebra classes because we notice that you do have math mathematics in your world you might notice that there is an x plane and a y plane and also a z-plane that makes something three-dimensional now we're just going to speak in three-dimensional terms for a moment imagine there are fabrics lined up up and down and perpendicular to the ground there are some that are laying on top of each other along the horizon line and some along a vertical line and then there are some in um, 
your field of vision going back and forth like in front of you and behind you in what you would call the Z line or what makes a two-dimensional drawing pop out and in doing so becomes the three-dimensional. There are other ways, other dimensions, but this is how we're describing it, X and Y and Z. If you can imagine the kind of fabric you have in your world called plaid, you see how there's a lot of zigzaggy lines and in the plaid uh, patterns, and we understand if you're Scottish, different tartans mean different things. We have actually done a great deal of study of your world. We love Irish and Scottish fabrics in particular because it is very interesting to us how much it mimics the fabric, ha, ah, fabric of time and space. When you are to look at these, it's not like actual fabric though, and it does look very much like your tartan patterns when you look at certain angles. This is why we, we have a very great deal of love and fondness for the Scottish and the Irish cultures because these fabrics are very, very deeply metaphysical and spiritual in nature and you thought it was just art. Ha ha ha. Okay, if you can imagine all these different planes and they exist together and they're tied together, they're touching each other because everything touches everything in the universe. You cannot get away from that. Even if you are touching nothing and there's nothing on your hands, there are molecules you do not see. You touch the fabric in time. This space-time communi- uh, the communication... Okay, I'm sorry. Start over. When you hold your hand out in front of you and it appears as if nothing is touching you, what you are not aware, aware of is on the higher levels and the higher realms, you are touching the fabric of time and space. If you were able to put your hands into the seventh or ninth dimension, you pluck a little tiny string, you might literally pull some strings. Ha, this is another joke. You see, it's, it's embedded in your language, but you did not know that this can be real. We know how to pluck strings and get you to pay attention to us by literally manipulating the fabric of time and space, even though it's energetic forms and fields, and we see it as a pale green or a pale white mixed with blue, it depends on our energetic levels and from what dimension we are viewing it. You can see that everything is connected. And if you knew the truth of this and you felt the truth of this, you would never harm another soul. You would never harm another being of light. Even you would never harm another being of dark because you would understand there's nothing, there's no way, there's no how to get around this. We are all connected through this matrix of fabric, the fabric of space and time. There are ways that you can pluck the strings as if they are on an instrument like a violin or a guitar, you may pluck these strings with your vibration. When you raise your vibration and you raise it very, very high, then you will notice that you will feel little strings around you when you get very good and you try to really feel this and you go higher up in your own body, high in vibration, you will feel the strings around you and you will start to hear music and sometimes they feel as if they're vibrating so much that they're making sound and music. This is the music of the fabric of time and space. You can pluck the strings with your high vibration and eventually the string will touch somebody else that is vibrating at the same rate as you. Have you ever wondered how you draw somebody to your body? You will meet somebody and they have the same mind. They are of like mind because they have touched like fabric. Ha, you see that was a confirmation. We can hear this sound outside the window. 
when things like that happen that is a confirmation of the one will we wish to point that out because we want you to be aware of all of the signs around you at all times there are the strings that are in play in every direction now we say x y and z but you don't know that there's even more planes than this there are an infinite number of planes in every direction possible have you ever seen a snowflake or a, a dot with uh, multiple um, rods going out in all directions maybe a dot in the middle and 12 rods maybe like one of your clocks the planes of existence in the fabric of space and time go out in absolutely every direction almost as if you are the center imagine your heart is the center of it and in every direction on a three dimension not three dimensional level this is not the third dimension but if you imagine the x the y and the z going across the horizon up and down in the vertical and forward and backwards and then in every direction after that possible you have some toys like this we don't know what they are called but they're like spiky balls there's a center in the middle with we won't say tendrils or tentacles because this is confusing but they're very sharp looking we've never touched them but we think they look sharp there are balls that little children play with and they have the spikes in every possible direction well imagine the center of that ball is your heart and you can pull everything to you or push things from you using these strings and lines of connection in the fabric of space and time in every possible direction and this is how the law of attraction and well the law of repelling things this is how it works we will call it the law of repelation but we don't believe this is a word in your world so we say the law of repelling things or the law of non-attraction there's some things that you will attract some things you will repel some things will remain neutral and that's the actual word of non-attraction means neutral neutrality there is what would maybe be called in your world the zero or the null set we can sometimes put nothing in motion in either direction because you have no opinion on something whatsoever but when you have a strong opinion on something say you do not like something and you try to push it away but the more you push it away the more you have emotion attached to it and the emotion gets sticky on the line as if it's a string in front of you and there's a stickiness to the line and you and the more you try to push it away the more it becomes sticky and thick and gooey like molasses and then well that just becomes a tangled mess and it sticks to you more does it not when something is sticking to you you cannot push it away from you when you hold a hard negative emotion towards something you draw it back to you in a sticky mess if you are afraid of getting a parking ticket but you're not paying attention to where you are parking but you focus on your fear of gain a parking ticket in time you will draw to yourself through the sticky gooey net mess that is your horrible low vibration emotions you'll draw to yourself a parking ticket you draw your fears to yourself through a sticky gooey mess but you draw the higher vibration let's forget that now we shall take a deep breath three times We hope that you have breathed with us and that you were able to get rid of the idea of that sticky gooey mess and negative emotions. So this might have raised your vibration during these this breathing time and you have brought more energy into your spine. Now you would want to think about something that you like, something that you love, something that you know for sure you will love but you don't have familiarity with that thing. For example, say you want a shiny new bicycle and that bicycle, you have never seen it with your own eyes or touched it, 
but you imagine it because you've had other bicycles in the past, or a house, or a pet, cat, or anything that you want. Maybe it's just a pair of jeans or a specific form of makeup that you want for yourself. It doesn't matter what the thing that you want is the thing that you want. There's a reason for everything. We do not judge what it is that you want, and neither should you. When you look forward ahead to what it is that you wish, when you normally see it, you see it in time, in the future, and that's another way to push it away. This is another law of attraction secret that most people do not know. If you imagine it in the future, it's always going to remain in the future. If you imagine that you can pull on a string, say you have a, a, a sweater and you have a string sticking out, you pull it, you unravel it, right? Well, what if you were able to unravel the, the space and the time continuum all around you, the fabric of space and time? You draw it to you as if you are already there in time, you have met it. So if you could unravel a string and, and unhook it and pull it towards you really rapidly, that thing that you would think about would be created immediately. So it's easier for you not to think about the strings, but we wish to help you understand a little greater understanding. And we're trying to make this simple so that a child can understand it. Hopefully we are doing a good job. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. I just opened my eyes, guys. We were at 2533, in case those numbers mean something to you. 25 is my birthday. 33 means something to me, too. So how to bring that up. Okay, I am back. Okay, so in so imagine that you are going to just pull one string to yourself. That one string is attached to that one thing that you wish to have. Let's say it is something simple. A cup of coffee bought in for you, purchased for you by a colleague. You imagine that you have it right now in front of you. It's hot. It's in your hand. You've pulled that string. You have pulled the string it was attached to. And just like a fishing pole, you, you uh, rolled it up. You rolled up the string and you pulled that thing to you. It is in front of you now. You feel the heat of the coffee. You smell the aroma and the steam rises and, and tickles the tip of your nose. And you raise the cup to your mouth and the edge of the cup might feel maybe a little cold around the edges, but as you drink the coffee, it is warmer. You can imagine all of the little components of the experience of drinking a cup of coffee. And when you imagine that, you also feel grateful and that also allows the strings to come to you so much faster. You imagine the great, the gratitude attitude and you imagine it's already yours and you feel happy. When you put happiness and you feel love for the person who purchased the thing for you, even if it is yourself, even if through the grace of God and it was only up to you focusing on what God told you to do, whoever or however it came to you, we just wish for you to focus on the love of having it, the joy of having it, the gratitude that is already yours and don't focus on anything else just focus on the one thing that you wish to have it is a little bit different with people because everybody is always going off in every direction possible with people that you wish to draw to you the strings get a little bit more complicated with a cup of coffee it's a simple thing there might be only one string but with people we are all, even in our world, we have so many connections to so many people that there are many, many, many strings to us and to others. And it's hard to get all the strings pulled in just the right sequence, in just the right order for that person to be drawn into your life. We wish for you to imagine that for a moment. If you like somebody and they are the object of your affection, but maybe they have an affection for somebody else, or maybe 10 other somebodies have affection for them. You see how many strings can be involved. Sometimes there are strings from people in their past. Maybe they're not attracted to them, but the string is still attached nonetheless. 
There are energetic strings in every possible direction between you and things that you have already touched. And sometimes on a psychic level, you can with your mind, which is very powerful. You are an almighty powerful spiritual being and you are able to put your strings out like tentacles or tendrils. And those tendrils can go to the object of your affection, which could be another human being as well as an animal. Say you want a goat or a llama or a cat, you can do this with an animal. Animals do not have the flexibility to choose as much as humans. Choosing choosy humans. Okay, they're saying something. I'm not quite getting it. I, I'm hearing something that's, I'm hearing choosy moms choose Jeff is what I'm hearing. And I, I don't know what that means. Somebody that might mean something to you. Uh, choosy humans, choosing humans, <laughs> choosing humans is a lot more complicated because of the magic that is free will. And so you can send your love to somebody but try not to put your strings or tendrils into them. This can cause you a great deal of hurt, heartache, and pain emotionally if indeed they are not your one and they are not to be your partner in this life. And if you have done this many times and you pine away for somebody, then that energy goes to them and you are constantly giving away your own energy because the strings grow and they expand and they become like straws, but they're the opposite of straws. You're not sucking the energy to you. You are pushing your energy out through the straws and then you end up with a lot of, well, sucking vampires, people who will suck your energy and siphon off your energy. So please withdraw all of your straws right now. Withdraw all of your strings. Just ask your holy guardian angel and your higher guidance to take your strings between you and people when you are trying on a subconscious level to enforce your will because out of sheer love or lust or intellectual compatibility, we aren't going to judge you for this, but we are going to point it out that everybody does this. You want somebody, you send them the strings. If they're not meant to be yours, that becomes a very painful connection and it becomes a constant reminder every time you turn around you might literally have your heart strings again this is in your language your heart strings are being plucked every time you turn around by that person who is not responding in the way you wish them to do you cannot control another human being any more than you can control your own fate Now we are aware of the Chinese philosophy of the red string. And we love this idea that when you are born, the beloved and you have a connection and it is a little red string. If you could only see it with your third eye, you would notice it was a red string. And if you knew how to unravel it, you would follow it to the ends of the earth to be with your sweetie pie right now. But most of you are not aware of the red string or the, the tail of this. But we see that this is so, especially with your twin flames or the soulmates you have chosen to incarnate with at this time. But what happens if you think that somebody is your soulmate or your twin and they are just a human being with another pretty face? What you are to understand in this case is that Well, they're probably not for you there, but you are attracted to the way that they look. When you put your tendrils out and then they choose another, they kind of siphon off your own energy to boost and bolster themselves and they feel a rush. If there are 20 or 30 males or females, it doesn't matter the gender, but if they have somebody or 30 somebody's interested in them, every time they have the the, uh, inclination to love someone on their own, They will gather up their strength, muster up their strength, you say. Why, how do they do that, you ask? They pull on all the strings that were voluntarily given to them. That's how you gather your strength. You are gathering the strength of others. We are all connected. Do not forget, we all are one. Are you starting to see how these things work? I hope that you are understanding more and more as we go on.
guys I just opened my eyes and it was three 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 nine and nine is three times three I, I I'm this is pretty there's some magical energy here all right so continuing with the lesson so if you can now consciously be aware of withdrawing all of your strings from all of the people you have liked your entire life your strings can last this long you are a powerful spiritual being and your strings are very very important they're very powerful did you know that you are a god you are a goddess did you know this well you know it now if you never heard this before how do you find your one true love you withdraw all of your strings ask Archangel Michael to help he is in your world 24 hours a day seven days a week every minute every moment he can help anybody he can help many anybody's at the same time do not worry because he is a magical being he is from a higher realm and can split himself into two or three or four thousand if he must he will help everybody and anybody he can be in all places at once this is the life of the archangels again getting back to our lesson have your archangel or your holy guardian angel withdraw all of your strings and strands you're going to want to cleanse yourself take a few clean 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 breathing what what are you saying cleansing cleansing breath sorry take cleansing breaths and let it go let's try this exercise now we will say this out loud repeat after us Archangel Michael please sever all ties and cords and strings and strands from everybody we've ever liked in our past allow us to be sovereign beings without the strings and strands in every direction let's do this now Do you feel hot? That is your energy. You are bringing it through your nares. We call this your nose on your world. You bring this through your nadis and your nares, and it goes all the way through your spine, and it helps to sever the connection when you are focused on that. You can use this for many other things, just bringing physical energy to your body in the morning. If you do not wish to get up, but you know you must, take three deep breaths, Focus on feeling physical health and vitality, and it shall be yours. Yes, you can bring through the strings, through the strands, physical health and vitality to you. It is merely a vibration. You can bring music to you that you like to hear just by thinking of it, and eventually it will come to you depending on how clear you are as a channel. How do you bring the right true love to you? Not the false ones, the fake ones, the ones with pretty teeth and nice shiny hair, the ones that just look at you and you melt, but they're not really your true one, and then you put your tendrils into them. After you've withdrawn all of the emotions and the strings and the words, years and years and years come to mind. Some of you pine away for years for somebody who is never going to return the affections back to you because they are not your one. So withdraw everything, all of your energy. Gather unto yourself your own energy. What you're going to do at this point is you would like to vibrate in and of yourself. Put your hands together in prayer format when they are flat, when your fingertips are touching and the heels of your hands and your palms are all touching. Put this in front of your heart space and then you say the following. I only shall vibrate with my one true love, with my soulmate or my twin flame or whoever is in the highest best version for me. I will vibrate only to the tune of that person. And then you will tune others out until you hear the vibration, the sound and the music in the higher realms from your ear chakras through your eighth chakra, you will be able to hear this. It sounds like nothing but silence to your physical ears. So 
It sounds like a humming, a high vibrational humming. When you say this prayer, then you take your hands apart and you put them up in supplication. The bottom of your, the, the outside of your hands resting on your knees perhaps in the palms of your hands facing upward. Another way to do it is to put your hands in front of you, in front of your high heart chakra, the highest part of your heart chakra. You put the backs of your hands facing you and the front of your hands facing forward. And then you say, I will only vibrate in the vibration of my one true love, my one true sweetie pie, whether it is my next twin, my next soulmate or my twin flame to come to me. Imagine that they are doing the same. Even if they are not, you're going to feel the energy of this. Imagine they are somewhere in the world you do not know, you do not see where. It does not matter. Because in the higher planes of existence, everything is very, very close. Have you ever wondered how to teleport? That's how. In the higher, invisible, unseen realms, everything is very, very close. That is a clue. We won't talk about it any further, but that is your clue for tonight. Begin back to vibrating with your one true sweetheart. Everybody has more than one true. Everyone has only one true twin flame, but you have many, many soulmates to contend with. So you have to find the highest vibrational contender for you. What you do is you put your hands in front of your heart chakra and you imagine that you are vibrating with the love that you have inside your heart. Imagine your sweetie is in front of you vibrating with the same love. Put your love halfway to them, not all the way. You do not control other people and expect to not be controlled. Put your energy halfway to them. Imagine there are 10 feet between you and in the dead center, five feet from your heart is as far as your own energy goes. They have to extend their own energy when they are ready for a relationship or to even meet. And then you just sit and you imagine this. Take three deep breaths and imagine this now. <sighs> Pushing out your white light like a cord from your heart. And it's only going, the, and the, see the end looks like it has patterns of, of various fibers and weavings. And the opposite end of that is going to fit perfectly. Only one person on the planet has it. It's a person you're meant to be with next. If it is a soulmate and you are here to be with four soulmates, and this is your second soulmate, remember that there will be a one after. But you might not be aware of what your soul contract states or what you have chosen, what you have chosen to let go of and what you have chosen to hold on to. Much of this is done in the higher realms when you come back to your physical body. It becomes very hard to remember. <sighs> Push out that energy in that white cord from your high heart. <sighs> Fill it with love, unconditional love, joy, beauty, and movies. The energy of movies could be something you want to do with your sweetheart or the energy of miniature golf can be something you want to do with your sweetheart maybe you want to take a long drive road trip that might be so whatever you wish to do with the person that you desire but you do not think of them you only think of what you want to do with them you don't think of who only what you wish to do do you want to kiss them imagine what their lips will feel like on your lips. Just imagine that. What? The feeling of that on your lips. Do you want to have a meal with them? What are you going to eat with them? What are you going to share? Are you going to eat egg rolls off of each other's plates in a Chinese restaurant? That's what. What you think about. Do not think of anything other than the what. Put your energy five feet in front of you and say this cord is vibrating only for my one true love, my next love, my one true relationship. Then what will happen is when they are ready, their cord will automatically come. When they meet in the middle, they will fuse together and your strings are attached. When this happens, eventually they are on their way to you. It can take five years. It can take five minutes. It depends on your willingness to let go of the resistance and how many of your other strings you have let go of already. This is a very important point. 
again remember to sever all your ties with everybody else this is only for when you're looking for true love if you are looking for fun with strangers in a bar you do not need this method of course ha 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 but those of you that are seeking true love this is how you do it you can simultaneously do the same thing with your next boss if you're looking for a job or your next business partner or investor if you are looking for money or somebody to work with again only think of what you want and put your energy field out there you can use your different chakras to put the strings out at different levels in your body putting it out through your heart is going to bring you love putting it out through your third eye maybe you will find a psychic partner maybe if you put it out through your throat you'll find a writing partner do you see how this can play out use these tools that we have just given you tonight to make your best possible life ever sometimes you will have to get creative sometimes you might want to ask us to come to you in your dreams and we will give you more further instruction you will wake up automatically knowing what to do whether you will remember the encounter with us or not we are not malevolent we will never kidnap you we will never take you against your will or cause surgeries or any kind of pain or confusion or mental distress we love you we are from the higher realms we are the andromedan people we come only in peace and the highest vibration of this universe that we can possibly muster up we come to you with deep powerful ideas in the realms of metaphysics because metaphysical things our our specialty we want to share it to, with you because so many of you have been chasing dreams and ideas and people for so long that you are running around with we see this phrase in your channel's mind heads cut off of chickens um chickens with their heads cut off there it is we see that many of you feel that this is how you are running around your world you don't know which end is up this is because you have not withdrawn all of your strings from that which you want what happens if you want something so badly and get it and then a few years later you sell it you still have a string attached to it cut all the strings now ask archangel michael to always be diligent in cutting all of your strings with everything that you have let go of that's better do you feel the relief of that <sighs> we felt your collective whole shudder just now with these words we feel that we are helping you and this is much this is resulting in the feeling of much pleased pleasedness we are very well pleased <sighs> Each individual hair on your head is another string. This is a clue. We want you to meditate on that. We're not going to give you more information at this time. It has been known and said though that your hair is your antenna to the universe. It is your antenna to telepathically communicate with others. If you were bald, you can still telepathically commu communicate with others. But if you have very long hair, it becomes much easier. If you do not get a monthly trim, it becomes much easier than that. There are astral tendrils on the end of every individual strand of hair that most humans are not aware of. We are seeing that there's a story about Samson who was strong until he cut his hair, somebody cut his hair, and he lost all of his physical strength. That's because the strength is in the filaments of your fibers of your hair but it is in its fabric the fabric of time and space and it's in a higher dimension and a higher plane you're not able to see it with your physical eyes therefore you do not know when your hair is very long and untouched for 3 months the very ends of your hair grow a bulbous feature on the astral planes on the higher planes in the 7th and 9th and 11th dimensions to you it would look like well we would like to 
not be terribly graphic, but it looks like a sperm or a lure-to-lure fish. It's a bulbous, energetic form. Oh, another way we can put it is it is like a neurological nerve cell where the axons and the dendrites meet each other while your hair goes out to meet on energetic levels the things that you think about and when you think about it where does it come from directly from your head travels down your hair and there's tendrils even if your hair does not fly up from your body each individual strand is like an antenna calling to you that which you want again if you're bald you have no less power you just maybe have hair in other parts of your body how convenient that is ha <laughs> We like to laugh and joke around, if you can tell. We hope that this has been an informative message for you tonight. We feel that this is the time where we must part ways. We have to go back to our planet. It's not a very long journey for us, but it still is a little bit of a long journey. We love you. We are your big brothers and sisters. We are the Andromedans. We hold our hands in front of our hearts to our sides and in front of our hearts and we send to you in every possible direction beams of radiant light we wish for you to be solvent in every area that means solving all of your problems we wish for you this is our blessing for you to know that you are sovereign sovereign beings we take these words from your channel's mind because these are important to you When you wish to give yourself love, focus your hand, palm, palms of your hands towards your ears, towards your face for beauty, towards your hair to change the color. Think about what you want, feel grateful for what you want, and put your hands in the direction of the thing that you wish to have. If you have any health issues, by the way, tumors from cancer, You may unravel the string from wherever the tumor is. You can just imagine that you're unraveling the string, plucking it out as if you were plucking out an errant piece of string in an actual piece of fabric in your clothing. There are more uh, instructions to healing these kinds of diseases, but on a meditative level, just imagine it's a string and you could pluck it right out. That is maybe the easiest metaphor we could come up with, and yet it is also true in many, many cases. You have strings attached to everything. Stop attaching your strings to everything. Only attach your strings to the highest, best quality lifestyle that you wish to have in your immediate realm. We bow to you. We honor you. We love you. We are at your service, day and night. Just call upon the Andromedans whenever you wish. And with this, we must part ways. We say at this time, Namaste and peace. Peace be with you. With all of our hearts and love, we are signing off. We are the Andromedans. Okay, guys, they have left. I mean, I feel kind of they're still with me, but they're, they've withdrawn the strings of their message. I hope that that cleared up some stuff. It sure did for me. That was very interesting. I did not know this information before I started to channel them because I have had a connection with them. I'm able to hear their message um, pretty easily. They do talk like that, um, but they have a different way uh, and form of communication, and it's very jolted and... It's a different form because they normally speak with their minds with each other. And so when they speak their minds to them, that's analog. When they speak through physical voice, it's more of a digital. If you are interested in sound production or sound engineering, then you would understand what I mean by that. Or maybe not. You don't have to be in those fields to understand these things. But like for if you don't understand what I mean by that... um, I'll I'll, uh, give you a demonstration. If I was going to say a digital sound, there are spaces in the sound that create a wave. And if you listen to it or speed it up, it would be 
it would sound analog, but it's really digital. And so there's like little tiny bits. It's like particles of sound. So if I were to say, and then I go really fast, it's going to go, right? So, <laughs> but if I was going to say something in analog on purpose, it would be, uh, and it's like kind of goes, that would be another way because it's smooth. You don't hear the the spaces in the breath. And when I make the sound with digital and from my breath, it is, I'm stopping my um, throat, opening and closing it rapidly. And so there's air bursts in between each individual sound. And when I do, oh, then I keep my throat open and the air flows, everything flows in harmony. And that's what analog is. And that's why telepathy is so much faster for people who have the um, ability to telepath from birth. It's analog. It just flows like water. You know, imagine like another way to imagine it is if there's water coming from a faucet that you turn on, it flows fast and rapid. But if you keep it open just a teeny tiny bit and you're not going to get as much water if it's just dripping, drip, 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 that would be the digital. Um, it's just some other higher understandings of these concepts. Um, using very simple terms and they're, they just gave these images to me. Um, they did not speak through me, but they gave me the images so I could explain it to you a little bit more. So, well, that's all I gotta say about that guys. I'm running out of time. So <laughs> I love you with all my heart. If you need to get in touch with me, metaphysical soul speak at gmail.com or you may send me a voice message, anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical. If you're learning something good and you want to send me a voice message and you want the whole world to hear it and just say what you've learned so far from metaphysical soul speak, hey, maybe I'll make it a commercial. You never know. <laughs> anyway, um, I love each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you for being on this journey with me. We are in this ascension together. We are in this big boat called planet Earth together hurtling and God knows how fast through space and time. And I'm just happy that I'm not alone. And I'm happy that we're all together doing this because you are me. I am you. We are we in Lockech. I am another yourself. And me talk you a, oh, yasin. We all are one. So that's all I got to say about that now, guys. <laughs> I'm signing off with peace and joy and the high vibes of the holy fifth dimension. Until next time, peace. Metaphysical Soul Speak is run on sponsors and listener support. This means listeners like you. If you are so inclined to support my efforts and my little podcast, please visit me at anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical and pledge an amount of your choosing today. Thank you.